Welcome to the Edmonton Real Estate Market Update for July 2020. I'm going to explain what happened in the market, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Patrick Fields, Edmonton Real Estate Guy, and I'm licensed with Remax Select. Have I got another great real estate market update for you this month. Are you ready? Let's start with home sales. In July of 2019, we had 1,327 home sales, so houses, condominiums, and duplexes. This year, we had 1,512, a 10.6% increase over June's sales, and an increase from last year July's sales of almost 14%. Now we haven't had sales that high since June of 2015 when we had 1,672 home sales. Now obviously I don't expect this to continue. I think August we'll see around 1,200, 1,250 home sales. And then in September and October, I expect those to remain steady as well, as long as we don't see a big spike in COVID cases. And with back to school coming, hopefully everybody stays safe from that. Of those 1,512 home sales in July, 875 were houses, and that's up from the 809 that sold last year, and a slight increase from the 821 that sold in June. Condominium sales totaled 419 during the month, and that's a good increase from last year when 368 sold, and it's up from the 360 that sold in June. We had 201 duplex sales in July, and that is up from last year when we had 128 sell and a solid increase from the 168 that sold in June. Now let's look at the sales volume. So this is when we add up all the sale prices of the homes that sold and compare that to last month and last year. If we look at what happened over the past few months, in May we had sales of 278 million. June total sales volume was just over $489,500,000. And in July, the total was $553,248,000. That's up from last year when the total sales volume was $482,875,000. The market has been so busy these past few months. It has been so great to see. Let's look at prices now. The average amount spent on single-family houses was $445,351. That's up from 2019's average by almost $7,000. And it's up from the average in June of $430,388, almost a $15,000 jump. The average price of the 419 condominiums that sold was $216,321. That's down slightly from last year's average of $217,749, but up from June's average of $213,881. I've seen some great deals on condominiums lately. It's really nice to see an increase in sales activity. We still need inventory to go down a bit more though, and then prices should start to level off or at least come up a little bit. I've actually seen a few one bedroom condos for $40,000, $50,000, and $60,000. It's an investor's dream. Duplex average sale price was $343,483, and that's up by a whopping $251 from last year, but an increase of almost $8,000 when it was $335,500 last month. Now remember, average sale price is calculated by adding up all the homes that sold in each category divided by the number of homes sold, so it doesn't take into account the size of the home. Please don't look at average sale price as a true value of a particular home. You really need to dig deeper into the prices of homes that are selling in the area and look into their full statistics. It is totally normal to see the average price fluctuate from month to month. Overall, in July, buyers spent an average of $365,663, which is up $8,350 from June's average of $357,311, and it's up by $1,780 from last year. If you have down payments saved up and a good job, this could be an amazing time for you to buy a home. There are still lots of fantastic homes to choose from, and I've seen interest rates as low as 1.89%. It's insanely low. 
And now on to our inventory, or how many homes are currently for sale. We saw 2,332 new listings hit our MLS in Edmonton in July. It's up from last year when we had 2,179 new listings in July. And this is just houses, condominiums, and duplexes in Edmonton. This doesn't include outlying areas like Spruce Grove, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, St. Albert, Leduc, or Beaumont, or any acreage properties. In June, we had 2,605 homes listed, so it's down by a few hundred, which is good. We don't want to head into the fall with excessive inventory, or it could cause prices to continue to drop. Our total number of homes for sale at the end of July is now 5,705. The end of June, it was 5,864, so we're down by 160 homes, which is good because sales will start to slow down too as we head into the fall. And now the absorption rate. Right now we have 5,705 homes for sale and 1,512 sold in July. So at that pace, it would take 3.77 months to sell off all the homes currently for sale as long as sales remained at the same pace and no new homes were listed. That number is the best we've seen all year long. Just uh, back in May, it was seven months. So if you're thinking of selling, list your home quickly to take advantage of all that pent up buyer activity. All right, now for days on market. The homes that sold had been listed for an average of just 54 days. It had taken an average of 58 days for all categories to sell last year, and 63 days was the average just last month. If your home has been on the market for more than two months, you might want to re-examine where you're positioned versus your competition and make any necessary changes quickly. Single-family homes took 48 days to sell, condominiums took an average of 61 days to sell, and duplexes took an average of 56 days to sell, all of which were better than last year. Make sure you are informed and educated on what's happening in our market. Three to four months ago, you had tremendous negotiating power as we had no idea on where we were headed. And in June and July, many homes received offers in the first few days of listing, and sometimes they went into multiple offers. Here are the highest sale prices for the month. There are currently 282 homes priced over $1 million in Edmonton. There are 235 houses, 29 condominiums, and there are 18 vacant lots priced over $1 million. There were four condominiums that sold for more than half a million dollars in July. The highest condominium sale price was $910,000. It was 1,837 square feet with three bedrooms and absolutely gorgeous views of our river valley, the downtown skyline, and city views. The condo fee was $1,367 per month. There were 22 houses that sold for $1 million or more in July. Talk about confidence being back in our market. The most expensive detached house sold for $1,783,000 in Glenora. This infill home is 3,178 square feet, has five bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, a fully finished basement, and a triple detached garage. They didn't even have any pictures of the inside. So there you have the July market report. If you found this helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more great real estate videos. If you have a question or comment, let me know. I'll respond as fast as I can. Why not stick around and check out one of these other great videos? Thank you for watching. Please stay safe, stay informed about what's happening in the world around us, and I'll see you next time.